Okay, Giant fans, get your tinfoil hats ready. Let's talk about what happened there in week 17. Alright folks, Michael Cohen here with you, Sports Talk Nation, and this is kind of a uh, little bit of a late recap of going over with that crazy Week 17 situation between the Giants, the Eagles, and all the utterly ridiculous conspiracy theories that have been, th been thrown out there since Sunday night, and also let's take a look at the playoffs as well. So let's just start off here with this Giants game. First of all, all I I I'm amazed by the number of Giant fans, not only Giant fans, but even people associated with the Giants themselves, players, even now Joe Judge, going out there and complaining and making the argument that somehow the Eagles intentionally tried to tank the game to, to screw the Giants. Did the Eagles tank the game? Yes, they did. Most likely did it for draft position. It's sly. It's not good. It makes it, the, it makes the NFL look bad. It makes the NFL look bad because they have picked Eagles Washington game for prime time. Why they picked that game prime time for prime time? I still don't know. It would have been better if they had Dallas and the Giants in the prime time, in my opinion. But hey, who am I? I don't make the schedule. The fact is, that was the prime time game. If that game had been played at like one o'clock in the afternoon, I guarantee nobody would be talking about the fact that Nate Sudfeld came into the game in the fourth quarter with the Eagles down 17-14. Now, I don't think this was intentional against the Giants. This was not a, this was this is a internal problem going on with the Eagles. Clearly, the players are not happy with Doug Peterson. Uh, there is problems going on between Peterson and Carson Wentz who was a healthy scratch for the game. Clearly Peterson doesn't particularly like have uh, have any f uh, fondness for Jalen Hurts either. Probably one reason why he made the move that he did. And it's not like Hertz was lighting up the scoreboard. You know, yes, he did get a couple of, yes, he did have a, a, a rush, a couple of rushing touchdowns. But overall, really struggled against Washington. 7 of 20 passing, only 72 yards, had a rating, quarterback rating of 24. He wasn't exactly lighting it on fire. And if he had stayed in the game, I think it's pretty safe to say the Eagles still would have lost the game to Washington. So to assume like a lot of people are assuming, that the had Jalen Hurts had stayed in the game, the Eagles would have miraculously won the game in the fourth quarter. Probably not. Probably wouldn't have happened, and the Giants still would have been out of the playoffs, regardless. But from the Giants' standpoint, here's the bottom line, and this is what a lot of people have said since. The Giants, four weeks ago, when they were 5-7, and five and seven, after that great win against Seattle, and we were like, wow, here come the Giants, you know, 5-7, and seven, they shocked the uh, Seattle Seahawks. Here come four. Here come the four games. They got games at games three games through those four games at home. Maybe they find a way to split those games. Maybe they find a way to get to the playoffs and they spit the bit. Didn't show up against the Cardinals. Didn't show up against the Browns. And then got destroyed by the Baltimore Ravens, predictably. And of course, Judge bungled the quarterback situation with the injury to Daniel Jones. Probably shouldn't have played him in the Arizona game, so he could have been rested for the Cleveland game. And as a result, he ended up having to start with Colt McCoy against Cleveland. And we all know what happened. It was a complete white it was a complete whitewash against the Browns. So it was a it's, it's it was a disaster going into this game. And the Giants were even lucky to even win the game against Dallas because if it were not for Mike McCarthy deciding not to challenge the completion. In the four, in the in the uh, fourth quarter, with the Giants on top by a score of twenty to nineteen, had he decided to challenge the completion that went to Pettis for ten yards to the Dallas thirty-two, had he challenged that, which was actually an incompletion as Pettis had dropped the ball and trapped it, if he had done that, the Giants would have then been forced to punt. Dallas gets the ball back. Maybe the Cowboys win by a score of two points, 22-20, instead of losing 23-19. to He put the Cowboys in a bad spot, and as a result, the Giants still had a pulse. So for the Giants, the Giants players to run around saying, and fans to run around saying that, hey, they, their team deserved to be in the playoffs, you were 6-10. and You were lucky to even get to the sixth win in Week 17, for that matter. So let's calm down, let's relax, and let's just realize... That yes, this was a team that improved. This was a team that played hard every single week, but it still was not a team that was good enough to be in the postseason. That's the bottom line. That's the bottom line to all this.
Yep. And again, you take a look at our Giants schedule. Had the Giants. The Giants have lost four games by four points or less, including games against the Eagles, games against the Bucks, and the games against the Cowboys. They won those games. We're not talking about this. We're talking about the Giants maybe being eight and eight, nine and seven, maybe being in the playoffs on their own volition. But because of their own volition of losing, they're out of the playoffs. And that's the difference, folks. That is the difference. So Giant fans, take your tinfoil hats off. You don't need to worry about the conspiracy theories anymore. And as far as the Eagles are concerned, again, they have their own internal squabbles, they have their own internal problems, and they're going to have a lot of issues going into next year because now Doug Peterson certainly is, if he isn't on the hot seat already, he's certainly scalding on the hot seat going into next year. It'll be very hard for him to even to get those players uh, to play for him, play hard for him again after what happened on Sunday night. But again, stop with the this conspiracy theories. Stop with the, the Eagles tried to do this to screw the Giants. No, they didn't. They just did it for their own draft position. That's all they cared about. And they just that's what a lot of these teams do in the NFL. Look at what the Colts did a few several years ago when they tanked the entire season for Andrew Luck. I mean, come on. Even this year with the Jaguars and the Jets, all about tanking for Trevor Lawrence, tanking for Trevor Lawrence, tanking for Trevor Lawrence. Everyone wanted them to lo- those teams to lose every single week so they can all get themselves in position to get Trevor Lawrence, right? And now because the Eagles, unfortunately, did it on their own to try to get the sixth pick. They're probably looking for a quarterback, for that matter, considering that Carson Wentz wants to get out of Philadelphia, for that matter. So who knows what they're doing. But And let's be honest. You, people are, I saw people complain say, the NFL has to step in and do something. They have to make the Giants whole. You know what the NFL's thinking? They're probably saying, you know what? This is good theater, man. We're going to give you the Giants and Eagles. This gives us uh, an ex- a reason to make Giants-Eagles a prime, uh, prime game in Week 1 next year. Don't be shocked. That's all the NFL cares about is ratings, right? Ratings, ratings, ratings. We'll talk to you next time, folks. Remember to follow follow us here on uh, the Sports Talk Nation here on YouTube. Like and subscribe below. Also, follow us on the social media at OpenMikeNJ on Twitter and Facebook.com slash OpenMikeProgram. Take care. Talk to you next time.